locked up and going to jail, the first thing they take is your shoelaces because they don't want you to hang yourself. So, you know, cats in jail, they walk around with no shoelaces. So you've had cats in jail and come out, and they come home, you know, they don't wear any shoelaces, and we wind up happening, like I said before. Folks pick up on that, and that's a style. It becomes a style. Wearing your, wearing your pants, riding real low. That's another jail thing, you know, because you take off your belt, so you can't hang yourself in prison. What happens, cats stop doing it, hangs it. Nah, it's a fashion thing. And everything is to the back with a little slack. Cause inside out, it's wiggin' and wiggin' and wiggin' and You know, Adidas in Detroit uh, basically peeped out the drug culture, you know, and, and, the, and the cats that were slinging dope in Detroit and made a specific Adidas with fur on the inside. And they took the form and just basically it was a blue. They did a dark blue. She could wear it at night, wear it in the wind, it wouldn't shine. And what they did was they inserted on the insert, it was a fur line, like in a jacket. It was fur on the inside of the shoe because drug dealers like to wear Adidas in Detroit and they warm in the wintertime and it gets cold there. So instead of having to wear boots or wear out their gym shoes, they made basically a gym shoe, you know, and designed it for drug dealers. Now, when they hit the market, it wasn't specific for drug dealers, but that was an idea that they went to the hood and guys said, yo, you know, we can outfit this and sell it to the masses. So. I could pinpoint what I thought pushed it over, and that's the Jordan Revolution. I think that gave the entire culture of sneakers, gym shoes, uh, an identity. I remember very clearly uh, one year working with Michael, and he's, he's always a good example. Um, he always wanted to do a shiny basketball shoe, you know, that looked shiny, uh, reflective, uh, uh, just real, real flashy. And I always talked him out of it every year. I said, no, 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 I don't think we can find a good material for that. And finally, one year, um, I found um, a, uh, a, a very high quality patent leather. It's a plastic coated leather um, that is, was very flexible, but also very durable. And I said, you know what? I think I found something that we can use on a basketball shoe that would actually help, help um, the, the um, Basketball players keep their shoes clean because the material was, you can clean it easily and it doesn't scuff up so much. So that was the Air Jordan 11. When Michael first wore it in a basketball game, um, during the telecast, the announcers kept talking about the shoe. They kept holding up the shoe. This, to them, it was very strange to see this uh, patent leather on a basketball shoe. Um, and of course, Michael is such a, was such a big personality and so, um, uh, such a trendsetter himself, that everybody, you know, started wearing that shoe. Just when the shoe got released, though those are the only shoes I remember ever having a release date, like an album. You know, when they hit the stores, everybody knew, and, and for a pair of shoes to come out, you got lines. We saw that shoe uh, being worn with tuxedos on, uh, like I remember uh, uh, a singing group uh, wore that shoe with their tuxedos during an awards program in the U.S. And uh, then patent leather became uh, 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 more fashionable in other things, handbags. Um, it started a fashion trend all across the board, uh, all over the place, um, yet it started with this basketball shoes. I, every, everything just worked. Every, Michael Jordan was the best at what he did, and they happened to find out that this cat Ticker Hatfield was the best designer. He was the Michael Jordan in his era. They didn't know that. But he just happened to be, and he's connected with this cat. And little did they know that, like, Wyden Kennedy and Jimmy Smith happened to be the Jordan of the ad game right now, you know? And it just happened to be one of those times where everything fit exactly at once. Yo, Mars Blackman here with my main man, Michael Jordan. Yo, Mike, what makes you the best player in the universe? Is it the vicious stumps? No, Mars. Is it the haircut? No, Mars. Is it the shoes? No, Mars. Is it the extra long shorts? No, Mars. Is the shoes it, right? Nah. Is it the short socks? No, Mars. Money's gotta be the shoes. Shoes, shoes, shoes. shoes. You sure it's not the shoes? I'm sure, Mars. What about the shoes? No, Mars. Money's gotta be the shoes. Mars Blackman, the character that Spike Lee had and she gotta have it, was kind of like a quote unquote, uh, um, Ghetto icon, as we call it. You know, everybody, everybody knew Mars. In that character, in the movie, everybody in the hood knew somebody like that. We had, everybody had their own Mars Black. Man, cat always running his mouth, you know, talking shit, doing whatever. We all had that cat in our neighborhood. But that was a black thing. And when Nike took that 
and turn that black thing into a mainstream thing. You know, we're connecting like Michael Jordan to that. It, that meant all the world to all of us because like, yo, you know, they're actually recognizing, you know, us. They're actually recognizing us. And that kind of took it from basketball. You know, because Mars Blackman was quote unquote hip hop. You know, he, he, he personified kind of what that hip hop cat was about. Throw beats, change, you know, the whole lingo. And to have a cat like that break into the mainstream. Come on, man. And with the local DBC news, Evan Cool J with a triumphant comeback. You don't hear anybody, you don't hear anybody black from the ghetto talking about the ghetto. We take pride in it. We take pride about where we come from. You know what I'm saying? So if, as bad as the situations may be with us, if people come into our neighborhoods and start filming it and showing it as being bad, we're going to be mad. Because we're like, nah, man, you can't come through here. You know, you can't come through here and just saying we all living like this. You know, this, this is how we live. This is just how we live. Now, it may look bad to you, but we take pride in this because this is just us. This is how we live. Now, if they come in and make it look beautiful, then we mad again. You know, it's like, oh, man, now, nah, why you going to try to, you know, make this scene of what it is? You know, we live hard down here. This is gully down here, you know? So it's a catch-22. We can't say, all right, they're exploiting us because if they don't exploit us, they're going to make us look bad. It's not only that we create trends uh, in the hood. It's that we also do them because it's our thing, you know what I mean? And sometimes that's all we have is is that amongst each other and we don't want to let that out all the time you know what I mean that's that's a big deal to us to to be different I remember this from Belle Biv DeVoe circa 92 93 wearing the tag on the shoe but they're flipping it and and, it, and it's on it's on some new style sneakers you wouldn't normally see anybody putting a tag on it's not the lame Jordan that, that you <laughs> used to see that they're flipping it with some limited color Nike yeah, or uh, Adidas yeah, yeah. what are those right there Asics yeah. Asics okay those are hot yeah, dog, if I could get a picture real quick. All right, thank you. Yeah, if you could, I just need your, your permission to, that, I, that I took the picture and you just signed a model release. You guys are officially models yeah, now. Yeah, uh, Don't. I'm a model, huh? <laughs> what that says is that, that I've got brand new shoes on and I'm proving it by having my tags on. Not only are they in pristine condition, but the tags are showing that these are brand spanking new shoes. And in a way, that's kind of a status symbol. Like in LA, it's always been about having new shoes. I know that for sure. LA is like, yo, you gotta be on top of things. You know, you got the fresh, you gotta have, everybody gotta have the fresh stuff. You know, um, and like in DC, it was, it's never about having the newest stuff, but your stuff always has to be clean. You cannot have, you know, you can have stuff five or six years old, but it has to look clean. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Not only just knock me down, you still buy my brand new white Ed Jordans that I just bought. And that's all you can say is excuse me. Yo, man, your Jordans are fucked up. Damn, man. You might as well throw them shits out. Them shits is broke. I know it sounds real shallow, but but honestly, to, to, to keep a pair of shoes uh, to the point where they look clean and you keep wearing them, I'd say uh, a few months. Th three months, maybe. I mean, I'm already kind of, I'm, I'm upset that, that my leather is, is, is crinkled right there. You know, that, that type of thing, which sounds really stupid and it's sad to say, but you know what I mean? That, that makes me feel like it's almost time to buy a new pair of shoes. Straight. Yeah, man. Ah, you're doing the door. Oh, man, with you too.